Hello and welcome back to the Leash Mind Podcast, Mental Health and Dog Training. I'm your host, Mandy Bautel. On today's episode, I have a very awesome, very fun conversation with Tabitha Kusera from Cheer Ups and Chatter. Now, I realize when I say that I do these intros and I say that like, oh, the conversation was so fun, but really this conversation is so fun. There is so much laughter throughout the episode. And I think that helps balance out everything we're talking about because we do discuss managing your business and prioritizing your mental health, sure, but also talking about mental illness, talking about disabilities, talking about ways that we can set up our businesses in a way that we can still prioritize those factors and finding little things, even if it's just like taking time to go get a snack during your day because, you know, the amount of times that we overbook ourselves, overload ourselves with work, sometimes it's really easy to run into that and just keep the momentum going and not even notice the burnout happening. So we really touch on that. We talk about imposter syndrome like we do in most episodes, but I want to note that while a lot of these episodes, we do talk about boundaries and imposter syndrome and prioritizing your mental health. Sure, we talk about that in every episode, but every single guest I have on, they have a different perspective to share. And so Tabitha's is, while very on point and very eye-opening of some things we may not consider, factors that stress us out in our business, just the humor that she just bleeds into everything that she shares. I just, ah, this is such an awesome conversation. And while it is long, you're going to walk away from this conversation and just feel a little lighter because a lot of the times we all feel the same way and the overwhelm is there just because we see successful people and versions of success are all different but just because we see these people talking at conferences and talking on a platform it doesn't mean that they don't encounter it the same way we do and they don't struggle with their mental health the same way we do they have just worked to put the puzzle pieces into place so that they can prioritize themselves and so their business can work for them. A lot of the times it is trial and error and finding out what works. And so I hope you find some benefit in this conversation and I hope that it helps spark you finding ways to find the puzzle pieces that work for you. So I'll stop talking. Let's just, you know, get into the episode. I have Tabitha from Cheer Ups and Chatter here with me. Tabitha, I am so excited to have you on the podcast. I've been counting down the days. Thank you so much for joining me. I am so stoked. Anybody <laughs> that knows me knows you're going to hear about mental health in some, for humans and animals in some aspect. I really want to learn more about how just you got started and where that, how it just kind of led you to this path originally. Yeah. So long story short, because I'm sure we could all talk about our past forever, especially right. now that we're older and reflecting and all that older people think. So I am a veterinary technician and I worked in general practice as well as animal welfare. So various shelters and farm Ooh. sanctuaries, because you guys, we can't just see one species, right? And in that time, I started, I actually started with wanting to handle the animals I work with in a more compassionate way. So, and I met Sophia Yin, who is amazing and is still one of my biggest inspirations, even though she isn't with us anymore. Um, she is in spirit, but I saw her lecture once, which is why CE is so important. You never know where you're going to find. Um, <laughs> So I saw her lecture once and I was like, I planned my lectures out the, like way ahead of time. And I was going to do her one lecture and then go to others because we're nerds and that's what we do. And I was like, I'm staying in this room. I am not leaving. She was speaking all day. And then that was really mind blowing where I was like, what was she talking about? Low stress handling. Oh, OK. I right up your alley. Yeah. So like, obviously, that's one of my biggest <laughs> things that I teach and do now for a living professionally. But um, that was my kind of first introduction into, hey, Tabitha, that traditional restraint that you were sure. taught, there's a lot more to that. And handling something I always say is a skill. And right. all of animal welfare. So that meant all of it. We don't necessarily treat it as a skill. So that's how I started. Just 
understanding how can I reduce the stress and fear of the animals I work with from a handling standpoint and every interaction I have with them, which is behavior, of course, but I wasn't there yet. And then I started, that kind of led me into getting more into the emotional well-being of my, before Fear Free was a thing, which I love Fear Free, but addressing the emotional well-being of the patients I worked with. So then I started just kind of like doing some behavior lectures, reading some books. And then, because I work with cats and dogs, and I would youth, like meet a lot of cats and euthanize them on the same day. Oh, gosh. That was really hard. But also, I looked at the whys even back then. And right. the caregivers were really suffering as well. So this wasn't like a malicious person. It was by the time we recognized our cat was sick, they were so sick that the most humane thing to do was to let them go. Right. Um, and I was like, oh, why is all this happening? And then I started looking more into cat behavior. And as a vet tech, I'm going to be honest, I have more access to resources than maybe some training professionals. True. Be fair, but yeah. also the general public. And guys, there was nothing. And what year was that? Like uh, That was like, oh my God, I feel like a little baby. That was, <laughs> it's 2020. That was probably like 2013. Okay. So, I mean, not that 10 long. years ago. Yeah. So That's a jump though. There was a few, but it was such basic foundation. Thankfully, right. I, I had that going on with my veterinary technician stuff. Um, and that was really eye-opening to me. I was like, oh my. And then all these like pieces came together in my brain. And I was like, so I'm going to learn everything about cats. Look, I'm going to be the person. It's on my shoulders. <laughs> because, well, kind of, I mean, I think we little yeah. that way, right? And because I was like, no wonder there's such a lack of understanding about because also as someone that I did low stress fear free handling with cats and dogs and I got a lot of pushback even from my colleagues about cats versus the same thing with a dog both in the same relaxed body language interestingly enough though I would hear more often that cat's gonna bite your face which is not the case cats there's a lot of body language but also that was everything started to make sense I was like we don't get a lot of body language resources for cats um, there's very few up-to-date evidence-based resources for behavior in cats. It's the, even the stuff that was fairly better than the other stuff was kind of foggy, uh, I could say, mm -hmm. where I can understand how the general public may read this and not be able to pick out the awesome parts and just kind of critically think and practically apply, understandably. So that's what led me down my path of cats. And then, of course, dogs as well. So then I decided, like, I'm going to get my VTS in behavior, which is Whew. a very long, in-depth process. It's veterinary technician specialty. I think there's 29 in the world right now. So Holy cow. Now, and that, you have to get quite a few hours. So that led me down to going, getting my KPA CTP. Oh, okay. Getting my CCBC through IAB. So everything kind of like meshed and rolled meshed. together to, um, to go to like the end goal of what you wanted. Yeah. And now I'm here. <laughs> we were just talking about before how bizarro, like when you think about it. Just it just happens. Yeah. yeah. It feels like it was like a year ago where I was that tech who was just really into decreasing the fear and stress and handling animals in a more safe way, not only for them, but for me and my staff. So it's really interesting. But that's kind of what got me down this beautiful path of behavior. But I that wasn't too long of a story. I'm impressed <laughs> because, I mean, it takes people quite a while to explain their story. So you sum that up very fast. So just Thank you. Thank you. give you a little R plus. <laughs> But I, that's so awesome that that just kind of led to one thing after the other. And then it just kind of was a happy snowball of it just rolled into the same thing. And that's huge. Um, I could talk with you about cats all day because now that I have my kitten, I'm just like, I have so much respect for people that lean in more to cat behavior and cat training because it is a whole other thing. I mean, we, we train our spouses. It's the same yeah. thing, you know? Humans are always learning. I always like just like animals, which I try to be aware of and be better because we're all doing our best. I know my husband and I are both. We have training backgrounds. And I'm like, so how could we reinforce that better? Is there a way we could set up my antecedents better, honey? Like, <laughs> my partner, bless him. He always says, you would never say that to a client. And no, no. I'm like, I love you so much. Thank you for checking me. You are correct. But so, you get the unfiltered version. So. Right. And but to be fair, that's something I'm I'm so thankful for my partner. And he's a big reason how I can do all the things I do and how I've gotten to where I've gotten when I wanted to quit the VTS process, for example. And he is something something I've been trying to be better about the last few years is I give myself I love giving myself so much to everyone else. Same. But then my husband gets the zero Tabitha and that's not cool. So it's something I'm trying to be more aware of. Like, yes, I just spoke at six conferences and I loved it, but cool. I need home and I need to be there for him and listen to him 
be and, the partner. Yeah. Because yeah, he's so amazing. And it's it's a team effort. So I, I'm trying to, I sound like I'm making myself sound like a horrible wife. I love her. her. I'm just trying to be better. We all do it where we give ourselves to everyone else. And then the people that like our best friends and our family and our partners, we barely have anything left. And that's something that I have been trying to check the last few years. I kind of want to talk about that a little bit more because I feel like, you know, a lot of the times in the industry in, in some of us, you know, do have training businesses with our spouses, our partners. And then, you know, like I did. And, and but then a lot of the times we forget that like, oh, that's still my partner. And like, we still need to invest in that and separate work from life balance. And I think a lot of times it just, and we get so burnt out with wanting to get ahead. Um, Your stories, like you've been sharing like small businesses and working so hard. And it's just, people don't realize that like, there's so much work that goes into it. But then sometimes it kind of just takes over our life and, and it's who we become. And it's like, well, I lost myself. I lost who I was to my partner and then our mental health depletes. But people, sometimes we don't notice that because we get so caught up in next best thing. Let's get ahead. Accomplish this goal that we forget to really celebrate and still sit in those moments. Does that make sense? No, definitely. I think <laughs> that's something, again, I'm I'm a people pleaser, which I love about myself. But I got to start to set some boundaries. Like I <laughs> like even the necessarily like this is a label, right? Like the negative personality traits. Like some people would be like, oh, you're a people pleaser that's horrible i love that i'm that way but i can't overextend myself like i have been forever and also i need to make sure that like you said i have energy for my partner and my friend like my very close friends and that can be really challenging and sometimes you're not even aware of it at this point in my career i've gotten down that that working 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 going 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 oh. that's kind of my baseline which is not healthy but that's my baseline and my partner has we've kind of learned a better way to communicate and he essentially checks me and i think for us that works and by check me, he might say, hey, so you've been home for a day since this conference and you it seems like he's so you're perfect. still buzzing around and you yeah. haven't like and he's like, it doesn't seem like you're listening to me when I'm talking to you. So he's not like, right. It, it's more of a like, hey, let's check in here, reassess. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, you are correct. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then with my other friends, like. I honestly set out like a mass text during the last before my VTS board exams where I sent a mass text out to like my 10 closest friends and said, I am sorry that I have not been available and have maybe been distant. This is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So just kind of like I would have not done that three years ago. Right. Yeah. And that really shows just the well, I think, you know, you just said three years ago. That was 2020. That's not that long. Uh, I know. I feel like 2020 really changed. I mean, it changed so many things like it could be pages long of the things that it's set to change but it's just I feel like a lot of us our mental health was right here and we had no other choice than to look at it and I feel like for a lot of us up until 2020 we were just cranking it out it was Going. hardcore hustle culture for me I know I was like that I ran myself into the ground and then I would be like, why am I snapping at everyone? Why am I fighting with my partner? Why am I losing friends? Why am I running on fumes? And it's just that get ahead hustle culture. And then 2020, and it was like, oh, we need to reevaluate things. And so I'm seeing a lot of people shifting how they're approaching their business, myself included, in just prioritizing our mental health, working on communication, thinking about how we're articulating things and how someone might interpret it and just, you know, people giving opinions on someone's post and nitpicking and belittling others who are trying to get ahead in the industry and poo-pooing that. And it's just now it's turned into I've noticed more people supporting one another, lifting each other up, not having this comparison and like, oh, you copied me and you're doing what I'm doing. Everyone is trying to help each other, which wasn't like that three years ago. Yeah. And I'm sure some of us feel like... <laughs> It's not like that now. Right. It there, takes time. Yeah. I mean, I have an amazing, but there's days where I have such an amazing support group, like of family and friends, but also of colleagues. But my first few years, it was, oh, I had no mentors at all. And also, even now that I have all this support, I still feel alone sometimes. Right. And right. That's something that I think we, we can all recognize. But also the pandemic was, I know I, as anybody who's familiar with my path, I share my mental health journey very publicly for multiple reasons. One being suicide is very common among my colleagues uh, in veterinary medicine, but also animal welfare. And then so mental health, again, not everyone is in a place where they feel comfortable talking about their mental right. health. 
than I do. And I used to be ashamed about it. And then I started embracing it. And I started that legit journey. Like I was kind of on a baby journey before the pandemic. Same. And with the pandemic, I took it to another level. And it hasn't in the big picture. It's kind of like when a client's like in the big picture, I'm like, what's a year of B mod for a whole year, a whole life of your cat and dog getting along? Right. Like it's nothing. So it's interesting to think about how far I still get weirded out when I see a post from two years ago and how I was really struggling with this thing, but I was trying. And now I'm in this place where I'm, I have that healthy coping mechanism that I was working towards. And essentially I had a breakdown like everyone else in 2020. Yes. All trigger stacked. And I mean, there was just so much, many things. So like you kind of said, I had to really reflect. So I strangely approached myself like I was a patient of mine, a cat or dog. Um, right. So I wrote down my triggers that I could identify. And I then that. I wrote my enrichment because I create enrichment plans for all my pa- or cats and dogs. I say patients. It's the vet med thing. It's just right. It's and I was like, oh, shit. So like I have like no fucking enrichment. Cool. Cool. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder. And a lot of these triggers are things I have some control over. So I was like, OK shape it, start small. I was like, I know I need a trainer because working out is helpful and I'm going to need help. So Mm -hmm. I also did a lot of research on trainers because I wanted to make sure I had a personal trainer. I wanted to make sure I found a good fit and I did and I love her and I still work with her. Then I found a therapist, which again, I had to do a lot of work. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it takes time. Yeah. I'm in that boat right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, but those are my first steps. And then my therapist, we, we talked about, let's start with, cause that's the other thing I think as perfectionists, which a lot of vet med behavior trading people are, you go into it and you're like, I want to be able to meditate and work out for five hours and like all this stuff. And which- journal and be grateful and yeah, and breathe. So we're setting ourselves up to fail, right? Right. Which we would never do with cats and dogs we work with or the animals we work with. So I started with not taking my laptop to bed. And oh. Three cups of water. Baby steps, y'all. Okay. Don't judge. Three cups of water a day and eating three times a day. Because as a tech, I really had to work to break that habit of only eating once a day, which is not a healthy thing that we condition in our in veterinary clinics. So that's where I started. And then I started working out with my trainer once a week. And now I'm running like I'm running a 50 miler in a month. And oh my God. I've, I've lost 60 pounds. I work out all the time. Like, Hell yeah. And I bet your I'm, mental health, like that just boosts everything. Ooh. Better sleep, better mental health. I am so much happier like and then I also got an appropriate diagnosis from a mental health standpoint so important yes with and a lot of that I I always like I joke but I say it very seriously I'm so thankful for my behavior background because yeah I want to lean into that oh (laughs) I've came so far because I love my therapist for example love her still love her and I was diagnosed with depression, which is a very general vague. I'm not saying it's vague, but let's, it's kind of a fall off. We all get that answer right. one way or yeah. another. Right. And I was prescribed an SSRI, which better living through chemistry. I'm all of, along with yeah. behavior modification and environmental enrichment, which includes management. Right? Yeah. I had no enrichment. So like those, even if I was on meds, it would be very challenging for them to work appropriately. But those meds did bring my brain chemistry to a point where I could more easily do those small shaping steps to get started. Just like animal I mean it's all the same yeah and then a few, like six months seven I can't remember seven or eight months into the SSRI I started noticing because that's another thing about therapy right I'm very aware of my emotions now right like, well and just the the changes in your body changes right. in how you process things like you were saying earlier like you were saying before we start recording like I'm ir- oh no or maybe it was starting to record I'm irritable and like so I'll wake up and I'll be like I'm so fucking angry and oh, then I'll I hate that so yeah. or like I love people like a lot. Like I'm an extrovert on another level, y'all. Uh, so I'll be like running in the park and I'm like, I I could feel like shrugging happening when I see people. So I would like call my husband. I'm like, something's wrong. And then I'm like, I might be too tired. I might be hypoglycemic. Like I used to never do any of that. And being aware, it, oh my gosh, it's been like a, a huge game changer. Um, See, I jump around. This is what we do. Um, oh, oh my God. No, I have something to go off of that. So this is perfect. Oh. Yeah. So I started recognizing that um, it was really challenging for me. To be fair, I strongly dislike emails. All of your suggestions and advice would be appreciated. Please bring it to me. I fucking hate emails. And I've talked to my therapist. I'm like, I need a positive CR. Please help me write a plan because I can't. I just strongly dislike them. But um, I would sit down to do an email 
And to be fair, I'm very like on the go. So I'll do five emails right. and then get up and do something. And that's just me. But I couldn't even like, I was like, dude, this is really hard to write one. And I was like, this is not normal. So I started keeping data. Uh, yeah, uh, no, track it, it like yeah. you would with a client. So I started tracking it um, legit. And then because, my, again, my therapist is great, just like veterinarians are great. Behavior consultants are great, but they need the caregiver's data to yes. be able to help. So then my therapist, because she knows my background, so she gives me a lot of textbooks to read because she knows I don't want. She just knows. So I read it and I was like, oh, shit. So the predisposed predisposition, like factor type things. My dad had schizophrenia. So the the likelihood that. I could be bipolar from a genetic standpoint was very high. Like all of these things that just how how common depression is accidentally misdiagnosed or oh my god diagnosis depression all of this and I was just like duh I have bipolar don't self diagnose but I just was it was very duh duh right like well when you have that realization of okay I'm not just struggling you right. know out in the ocean without a life preserver. There's actual shit going on and I need to figure it out and set my life up better because I feel like a lot of the times we and I was talking about this in another episode, but we a lot of the times we don't realize that we have something going on underlying and we just keep struggling trying to figure it out and make it work. And that's a really good point. So something that I think we've all felt, but there were times where I would go, 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 which is my baseline again. And then I would just be dead. And by dead, I mean, guys like extroverted as hell me would not look at her phone. I wouldn't get out of bed. And I used to just say, this is exhaustion, which to yeah. be fair is very likely <laughs> based on my workload, which I've gotten better. But um, <laughs> but also, I mean, this has been going on for years, like for years right. and years. It's a cycle. And, and I got up testing for immune disorders. And and once I got my diagnosis, I was like, oh, that was the down part of the bipolar. I, was, <laughs> I felt, I know that sounds, but I was like, Oh, but you don't know in the moment. I was trying to like, I was like, because also I think as humans, we just naturally adapt, which is kind of cool. So I was like, this is just exhaustion. I'm fine. I can't function for <laughs> four. But then if my friend was like, Tabitha, you can't function for four days and your baseline is like high energy. This is. And now I'm like, like you said, it kind of just hits me. And it's it's so then we changed my medication to a mood stabilizer, which is a lot more appropriate for my diagnosis. Right. And I haven't had a suicidal like down since like, I'm not going to cry, but it's just sick. Like, it's so awesome that like I have not had a suicidal like Tabitha can't function thing for four days since starting and obviously i also have all these healthy coping mechanisms right it's a whole you know library I mean, i've of done health. a lot of stuff but right I'll, i don't think without my behavior background which is also why i try to share these stories because not everyone is lucky enough to have our behavior background right but and but hearing from it firsthand from someone in the industry it's it's just been and now again like i'm the happiest i've ever been and i i joked with you earlier like i i love being bipolar which i don't hear my, many people say uh i think it's a superpower um like i used to be really ashamed and then i was like i fucking like me like i fucking love who i am and part of well, that is my crazy high energy i could have all these jobs yeah but the downs are very well managed and I have healthy coping mechanisms. So like I wouldn't want to. It's who I am. Right. Imagine if it, you didn't have that. Like I, it's like you're kind of your sparkle would be a little gone. Kind of. You and, wouldn't be as fun and, and, and passionate. Yeah. And I've kind of some people you could tell they're a little weirded out when I say that. But I'm like. That's sticky though. Yeah. Well, facts. Yes. Because I'm very comfortable. No, this is such a good segue into this and like I can totally piggyback on that because I am an open book about mental health too and, and medication and diagnosis like I have tried every SSRI under the sun and it took me finding my um, psych and I talk about this a little bit in um, my episode three where I talk about my ADHD and PMDD but it took talking with her and working through her with this and saying like look like I have all these symptoms and, and like you said I was like am I bipolar? Because, but my symptoms, it, it tracked with my cycle. And I finally started like tracking like, okay. And, and I literally noticed this again this week. I was like, okay, it's my cycle is about, you know, four, 10, 12 days away. I feel a shift. And even my husband, we have enough communication now that he's like, you're angry. Like, why are you so like snappy? And I'm like, 
Oh, the flip switched. Okay. Well, time to get back on the Prozac this week. And that's how it would be, you know, and I finally have a system with her of, okay, I, I start, you know, my floxetine a week before my cycle starts. Cycle starts, we're good. But it would, it helps because where my cycle the week before, I would have those really bad down days, not get out of bed for like three or four days. Don't want to look at my phone. I want to delete Instagram. Yep. Fuck woof culture. Don't want to do it anymore. And I never thought that was a real thing. I did not think PMDD was real because the last eight years I was told by doctors that, you know, I'm just depressed. I'm just highly anxious. Yeah. Um, it's not my cycle. Maybe I just need to get on birth control. And I'm like, oh, you just want to do all this to me again. And then gaslighting party. Yeah. Yes. And and finally finding someone that understood me and was like, no, this is real. Let's do your blood work. And, you know, blood work isn't cheap, but I was just like, I need answers. Got my answers I needed. And she was like, look, you are severely low here, here, and here. And this affects your energy. This affects your brain fog. This affects this. And I'm like, shit. Why? I could have had this answer when my symptoms started at 26. I'm almost 33. And I'm like, God. But it's just we don't know. And, and so we keep trying to climb up the rope and just, you know, it's like oil is coming down the rope and we just keep trying to grab on and it's just everything pushes us down. And being able to get a diagnosis, not that you need one, but it right. helps provide clarity so that you can get more answers and better set yourself up for success. I always thought I had ADHD. Well, no, I was like, okay. <laughs> let's rewind a little bit here. <laughs> My my mom always told me growing up, she's like, I think, I mean, I have it. Grandma had it. Like, I, I have it. And she was just like, you know, until it affects you, don't worry about it. And I was just like, yeah, mom, whatever. Yeah. And so then I hit 30 and I'm like, maybe she was right. And then, you know, I noticed it more. And, and now that I got my diagnosis, I noticed it more in her. And I noticed her traits. And it's helped our communication because I'm able to help her. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, and so it's interesting to see that standpoint, but also to realize where, like, I was overwhelmed with work a lot of the time. And it was because I wasn't setting myself up the right way. I was trying to, and I, I do say this in another episode with someone else, that it's just I was trying to force myself to be neurotypical and, and fill these boxes like everyone else does. And my brain just didn't work that way. And I didn't realize that. And I think that's where I made my brain and who I am work for me. Right. And that has been, I'm still not perfect. That's not a thing. No one's perfect. The amount of growing mentally, physically, however, uh, I have done in the last, again, I really, I've always been on this journey, but I took it to like another level to set myself up for success. It wasn't until 2020, which is not very long ago. And how far no. I came is still, I still have a lot, long way to go because this is, behavior is a lifelong thing. We know that. Right. Yeah. But I'm just reinforced over and over again. And I'm like, you're going to go for that fucking run, Tabitha, because you never feel fucking shittier after fucking go. Right. You know what I mean? But I have a learning history now of enough reinforcement that I I know that my brain is right. Like, or now <laughs> something that I've also learned to accept, I do have quite a lot of jobs. Like I'm a speaker, I'm a consultant. For You're doing behavior. a lot. Yeah. I consult with businesses, I work with Fear Free. I get around um, and I love that person. But there's also days where, because my husband's like, again, love him. Uh, he'd be <laughs> like, this isn't relaxing. Let's define. Let's, what right. Define? Let's define what relaxing is. And he's like, this isn't, because when you're, we all can relate to this, right? Like, you're like watching TV, but you're so fucking panicked about everything you have to do that you're more stressed than you would be if you were doing said things. So I have learned one thing where I'm like, you were fucking on, like you recorded, because I also have a podcast. I was like, right. you recorded. So you've recorded three podcasts. You saw two brand new consults. You did a webinar. I'd be hey, exhausted. Tabitha, today, you might not do shit in the morning and you're going to schedule for that. And yeah, you're going to drink coffee and watch UK TV because it's my favorite thing. Very sure. Comedy is my favorite and just watch YouTube UK stuff. And that's, and I used to shame myself for that. And now I'm like, yeah, girl, that's what you have to like, you guys, I have my little pet talks inside myself. I'm sure we all do. Oh, yes. The same. No. Oh, my God. That's that's so important, though. And, and learning to offset when you have heavy days. We don't think to do that. That is something I started implementing this year. When I do the podcast recording episodes, I've talked about this in my stories plenty, but I need like a good hour plus after of an episode because I'm just so energized from talking about things. It feeds my soul, but I'm... You need like a... So it's Ooh. super funny. So when I met my trainer, I told her, because she's an ultra runner, I was like, I fuck 
Oh, God. I set, I set realistic criteria and goals. Right. And I was like, just heads up, love you, girl, but I'm not going to ever fucking run. And then I always liked hiking. Like, that was my meditation back back in the day. I can't even remember. Uh, but then, again, this is another thing. I always would say, I don't have time. You do, by the way. Just heads up, guys. And then I was like, oh, I'll start hiking. I like true crime a lot. So I was like, it wouldn't hurt to be able to run as a woman in the park. So I know that sounds silly. So I started just running a little bit and now it's been less than a year and I've already ran a, a trail runner. I've already ran a 50K. And it's funny because like after a stressful day, so I might do a run or because it's like my meditation, which also that looks different to everybody because I used to think it was like, sitting not thinking and I realized that is the complete no. opposite of what meditation is but that's what society puts out which is what I think we think but I think of it as like a decompression walk yeah it, it's dog. whatever is going to fill yeah. your cup and, yeah. and take your mind out of the work stuff the behavior the animal stuff man has just and also I've learned because I have to get my colleagues to care about themselves and this could be really challenging as well because again I used to be that person at, I don't have time or like I'm a tech and I'm working 14 hour shift you don't have time to pee yes you do <laughs> and when you pee you will be more productive like all this stuff that we yes. hear about, but now that I've lived it, I'm like, guys, you, you, you do have time. And if you don't take the time, you are, there's no, you, there's no way, like there's no way I, there's, I would have probably quit my job already. Well, I know I work for myself, but still, I would have fired myself. I know there's no way. Cause I would have just had how much more productive I am because I have those healthy outlets for needs. And then also I'm an extroverted person. I'll be honest, guys, this is embarrassing but i was never comfortable with being by myself uh, oh I, no it takes that to learn skill yeah i didn't want to be with my own brain and now i'm like yes i want to run 25 miles by myself and it's i love and that. now i would even go see a movie and that is not something that would ever have happened five years ago so again like it's just interesting the things that happen and that you you and then my trainer is also a good trainer because she didn't force running on me i came to she probably helped a little bit how we help clients she reinforced you yeah yeah like i help the client understand see the pain in their cat or dog but i didn't say it they saw it so now we can go to so she definitely did that but she wasn't wrong i love it i don't know what i do without exercise nature and running like well and and that's so important god you were touching on so many important things but no it's so good this see, is, and this the is woman great. i apologize all the time i don't even i don't even need better. to no dude i say sorry all the time and my partner again yes. that lovely dude he's like why are you saying sorry that person bumped into you with their cart i was like Okay, you're right. Let's. That's a good observation. Please keep sharing those with me. Let me go slam the cart into the side of theirs now. But no, no, just being able to to step away from things. And even you just saying like, no, you can go pee and you'll be more productive. Like, no, but really, real. that is for real. Because with like, I noticed when before I was diagnosed with my ADHD, I would hyper focus so long. I'm not even joking when I say that I would sit for five to six hours. I would hold it because it would just be like, okay, I need to get the I'm next thing. This one, one more idea. thing. One more thing. I have this. I got to focus on this. And then like the second I'd walk away, I'd forget it. So then I'm just like, I have to do it. But then my husband husband will come in he's like have you eaten lunch like did you have you when have you gotten up last and I'm like oh this isn't good this isn't healthy and so now I have this habit of and you know I, I talk about my whiteboard plenty and having my list of things to check off every day so I'm not overwhelmed but I have it so okay I sent that email I'm gonna get up and go walk around yep. for 10 minutes okay I handled these social media posts I'm gonna take 20 minutes like just having those little breaks helps and like <laughs> sometimes my husband and I have to go into each other's office and be like rub each other's shoulder and be like honey when's the last time you know you took a second and sometimes I'll walk in and he'll be like this working and I'm like your shoulders are in your ears like let's take a break and like walk away for a second but it is it's it's we deserve breaks you know we tell our clients all the time especially with like you know separation anxiety you know go take a break go walk around with your dog just it but we don't think we deserve that and we need it with how much work we're doing yeah, and how and much we're investing in our clients. I remember what I was going to say because I think I got off track, but it still flowed, guys, right? Uh, 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 so it did. for my colleagues, which I think this was also true because we all say like, because there's toxic positivity, that's a really big problem in vet med. But like, that's a whole nother thing. But helping colleagues understand how to, like you said, we think about the animals we work with, but we don't think about us. So what I'll do is straight up, which I found to be helpful, is I will sell them taking care of themselves. And I'm not making this up, but I have to get some buy-in and find their motivators, right? So Right. And taking care of yourself, which I was this person as well, was not enough. And I know that's a bummer, but this is real life. 
So I would say if you go pee or if you eat lunch, you're going to be able to place that catheter faster or you're going to be able to right. communicate with that client better so right. that animal's going to have better care. So I had to kind of, I've noticed with some of my colleagues, which I was this person as well, I had to get into it first being like, if you take care of yourself, you actually take better care of the animals you work with. And then once they got into it a little bit, then they got, they're like, oh, that got them starting. Because if you just said, Tabitha, you should take care of yourself. I'm going to tell you to okay. whatever words. Yeah. Or our, people used to always tell me and they meant well. So this is obviously, this is a bit of a trigger for me because people mean well when they say this to me, work less. As if it's this like magical, uh, and they're to be fair, they're probably not wrong a little bit, but also that's such a matter of fact, like blanket statement. It's right. Like, like, what does that actually mean? Because that can mean so many things. And what does that look like for said per? Because it's I, different for everybody. I used to be told work less, not, not um, like seek therapy or find a hobby outside of work. It would always be work less. Or for example, I'm triggered by do yoga too, because I used to get told like I'd go to a CE at a vet conference or behavior conference and they would talk about yoga. And I'm like, y'all don't understand what over. It's not the same for everyone. Yeah. And also, if you are over threshold and in it, like suffering in it, like for one, one of those, like the down part. The down was, day. Yeah, no. You cannot then. I don't want to move my body. Right. You can't. I can't get out of bed. Out. Yeah. I can't even find a therapist online. This is too much work because I'm in it. So I, right. I think, like you said, like you would never ask a dog being over threshold to. Straight. So why would we do that with ourselves? And I, I think, which to me is like work less. But that's just how I, I interpret that. But work again, less is our sin. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. That needs to be fair. <laughs> That's because I'm sure many of us, and to be fair, I, I have, you know, we all work a little bit too much. I'm working on it. It's an ongoing process, right? Progress isn't linear, all that stuff. But, and when we're excited about things. Yeah. Yes. But also, don't just tell your friend to work less because, guys, like if you have that work. thought, think about it and process it and or how that can come out differently. Maybe. Yeah. Or say, hey, can I help you find a virtual assistant? Can I right. maybe, maybe find, like, instead of just saying work, glass was a very blanket statement that in many cases like yoga can actually be triggering because you're in it and you or how can you delegate yeah how can you maybe give them solutions or suggestions about hey do you have an accountant oh i have a few that i can share their information so that person because again even as a business owner when i'm not going I'm through a mental thing i get real overwhelmed at that stuff because i oh yeah like it so if you're like here's three i'm like you're the friend ever and you have significantly helped decrease my workload and I will actually look into those accounts now. No, I have, you know, I went through foot surgery. That's why we had to reschedule. And I've been trying to like, you know, my mental health has tanked because I am a very physical person. And oh, how long do you have to be on rest? <sighs> how long time? Oh. Like six to eight weeks oh, before I uh, before I can go on short, slow walks. And I'm like, I like hiking, like challenge. four mile hikes. Like what the fuck? Um, alternative behaviors have you found <laughs> yeah, cute yes so i've it's it's just it's figuring out how to move my body differently because one of my legs is stronger than the other i have to overcompensate i can't bend the same way i can't maneuver the same way and i told my husband like a week or two ago i'm like i feel really angry and down and it's just like i can't process things I have in here when I had my outlet of how I would handle it by working out, moving my body, hiking, whatever. I can't even do that. I can't even go walk at the park with my dog. Like it's yeah, that yeah. bad. And so I finally, you know, talked with one of my friends who uh, does, she owns, co-owns a CrossFit gym. And she was like, hey, here are two workouts that you can do instead of just saying, oh, move your body this way or oh, do this. She was just like, just these are two ways you can do it. And you only have to do it for like five minutes. And I'm like, beautiful done did it this morning mood was so much better but it's just i needed the help of figuring out how to move my body because i kept trying to do it the way i was used to doing it i didn't know how to you know figure it out and that's why it's really important so i have because i have bad hips for i have a pin in my hip from when i was 14 Ugh, <laughs> things happen and Ugh. when you were 14 guys they would just put a pin in your hip and not have you do any rehab it's so fun so i'm just like <sighs> fucked now in my hips but that's okay um, cause it's my body. I'm learning to accept it. So I'm an ultra runner. So I've of course oh my God. ankle hip stuff. I have a lot of management things, but after a 50 K I had a ankle thing and I couldn't run and I did not do well. God, no, it's 
That's when you're used to it. I was not. I was essentially throwing tepid tantrums uh, in my home. But I did, again, which is why it's important to have a community. I'm working on building ultra runner friends. So I could, like, they could be like, you're right, Tabitha, that does suck. But I'm hearing it from someone who knows. Like, right. Did, and then I started, guys, I still, I did it angrily, but I did it. Uh, <laughs> I started kayaking, which I've never done because I was like, I can go outside. My ankle is in place. <laughs> It doesn't need to move. Uh, and then I also bought a bike because my therapist and my trainer and everyone was like, God, so love. This is going to happen because of your, it's just going to happen sometimes. Probably good to have some other. Uh, Alternative behaviors. Right. And right. In, the, in the winter, because I am from Ohio, I get seasonal depression. And Same. my partner's always like, like, let's play video games. And that's a really good, healthy, like, so just, it's important. I've, also, it's great to have an outlet, but when you only have one and that gets taken away, I did not handle it well, which I like now that I think about it, I'm like, that was a really hard time. But again, reflecting, I'm like, I learned new things and right. I'm going to get more and more as I go. You're going to add more to your toolkit. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. More healthy coping mechanisms and because your body may not be able to do one said thing forever and that's okay. Right. And and I think just being able to provide ourselves with these outlets and more yeah. enrichment, so it, it, it just... It gives us different ways to, you know, some days you're feeling ragey. You don't want to move your body. You don't want to bend. Like there are days when I would do my yoga videos and I'm like, I can't hear her talk right now. She's talking too much. And I'd be like, that's fuck it. I'm going to go run. Like, or, you know, I am like, I don't want to move my body. I feel very bogged down this morning. I'm going to go be in my garden for an hour if I can. Or, you know, I mean, we have a fixer upper. So I'm like, what can I do? There's so many things. And so, but that's like the first two years of living in our house. It was like, all right, yeah. what's the project this weekend? And it would get me out of my head. But I think it's just a matter of figuring out what fills our cup and finding, leaning into those things when we need them. And knowing that it's okay if, you know, we need a slower morning or we need to cut out a little early from work to take a little time for ourselves. If we figure it out into our schedule, we can make it happen. And to learn from past stuff. So, for example, yes. I used to, like, I would speak at a conference. And, again, I'm extra on. I'm a bit extra. Uh, you have so, to be on. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm on, 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 on. Like, not just while I'm speaking because I'm like, I want to mentor and help and support people because I didn't have that. And that's something that's really important to me. And I would come home and have clients that day what the fuck was I thinking yeah. so I had to do that for you guys so I hate to admit it but I had to have that ha happen repeatedly before I was like hey so a travel day is really stressful actually and you're really tired and this is again where my lovely partner just pops in and now I don't schedule appointments for the day sometimes even the day after because I don't get until you eight. got that you need that recovery time yeah I need that but it took me so learning from because again that might look different for somebody else but being like okay or I had this really heavy client and I because we generally right. have an idea of what we're going to see so I'm only going to schedule I'm going to move around my other appointment for today because this is initial consult but we're talking about behavior euthanasia and like pretty significant heavy stuff, stuff. and um i may need like some mental health or a buffer like, yeah, yeah a buffer or period. i do trauma-informed consulting for animal welfare and vet clinics and i remember i was at this amazing shelter in florida and i was doing like a, overall two days with their whole staff and the staff is amazing like their csrs acos uh kennel staff behavior staff i mean it's amazing and i did fear-free handling workshops and then enrichment and body language and all this stuff hoo, hoo. and the second handling workshop because it's all about conversation and hands-on stuff and we ended up going on about somehow a conversation started about because I mentioned mental health a lot and I mentioned how decreasing fear and stress for the animals I work with decreases my fear and stress and I'm very open totally and like then it became this beautiful but also very in-depth conversation with these 10 staff members about how they cry every day and how they are really struggling and suffering and it and the behavior person who brought me out she's like oh my gosh I'm so sorry I'm like no they needed no they needed that, that release out. and it, seriously I get emotional thinking about it because it was just such a beautiful like it was just beautiful and have I think just having them be listened to and then also that helped me go to management and say hey we need an action plan to address the you know FAS and your staff that's you huge know? though but I went to hike on the beach after that because it was beautiful and I wouldn't want it any other way but I needed to kind of like decompress that is big yeah you know I shake off like a dog like I had to like shake it off like and just being again 
five years ago, I might have not done that. And I maybe then there's been times where my partner picks me up from the airport and I just stop. But it's because obviously there's some trigger. There's some other things going on there. You're um, processing it, too. Yeah. Sometimes so, that you got to cry it out. Oh, I love I love a good cry, guys. Cry it out. I used to feel like, it. I cry. And now I'm like, you know what? I, I cry. I had a colleague. I had two colleagues take their own lives in the last month and I went for a run and real talk I fucking sobbed like a baby for the whole run and I was like I fucking needed that like that yes it comes up because you need it yeah Yeah. so embrace your emotions don't be ashamed and thankfully I'm not that ugly of a crier but also I can't speak for you know speak for yourself I'm definitely a Kim Kardashian crier someone blocked it like if someone saw because no one was at this park but also I remember when Roe versus Wade was overturned and I went like no joke I went for a 20 mile hike deep in a wood that I knew there weren't a lot of people and I screamed a lot that day because I was like allow yourself to grieve and then write senator like you know right exactly and obviously running is a pattern here but it's just and nature but it's just like feel your feels like do your thing I love that I feel like a lot of the times that we think that we're the professional we're the person that someone is coming to therefore we can't do that we can't have that vulnerability we can't share that we can't we don't we don't deserve that when it's like can of all the people we need to because we are handling hard cases we are having hard conversations we are having to be empathetic and be on and provide information but also being that person that they can lean on to of course we need to process it of course we need that time we absolutely deserve it otherwise hello burnout hello you know early end of your career because hi i only lasted four years before i was just like i'm done i I can't so many amazing colleagues and friends who i respect their decision and i love them but they left especially in vet med they just completely left the field and it's it's understandable but again i support and respect their decision but it's it's heartbreaking because it's just like or even cat behavior people i know a few that they were doing it for like a year like barely at all i mean i mean from my perspective and it's like you're I mean, just getting started. Yeah. There's a lot of other, but a lot of people start, like they start as a veterinary technician or a behavior consultant, but they're, they've are they already been kind of doing things within that realm, but maybe with a little less, you know, knowledge. So they weren't, which was probably even more challenging for them to be thrown into situations because they had less resources. Right. And then going into it full steam. Right. So by the time they go into it, they're full burnt steam, out. I see that all the, and that's probably what happened in those contexts. So I think it's, but also I respect those decisions like a hundred percent. Right. You do you, but also how can I help my amazing badass colleagues thrive? And also clients love when you share your, obviously you read the, you read the right yeah body language but I always like I might be the first person to tell them that I'm observing signs of stress uh in their cat or dog or signs of pain in their cat or dog and that can be a heavy thing because caregivers are such so amazing that they're like they in, in, how did I miss that right or uh, how dare I do which we do I'm a horrible parent yeah yes so then I'm like then I start doing it I have a jig I do a jig <laughs> Because this happened so much. And I'm like, but now that we recognize it, we can't help them. And then they just start oh, laughing. Oh, I love that. But it's good because it's like, feel it, but move on. Because, you know, and then we, I you got like, the help. Yeah. My dog, how, because of course I have animals uh, with anxiety. Yeah. Um, and I share my dog's path about how I didn't recognize that, you know, as a, as a veterinary technician, I didn't recognize that I knew she had some anxiety. But until I really started getting a little bit more into behavior, like a year or two, like a little baby behavior mm-hmm. person, I was like, oh, you have 45 displacement behavior behaviors a day. Yes, I counted. You have 45 behavior. I'm like, I wonder if you have some generalizing, you know, and I, t- I share that story when I lecture to you because I think so many times we, or my therapist, I remember I was being a perfectionist and I was like, how the fuck can't I see what's wrong with me? I know that sounds bad because I'm like, I'm behavior person. And then he's like, put your hand in front of your face. And I was like, okay. And he's like, what do you see? I'm like, he's like, my, I'm my like, hand. My. And he's like, yeah, that's it. Cause you're in it and you can't see everything else. And I was like, hey. that was like, again, oh my God. Yes. Go. and I still think about it when like all the time, because I think we can also be, I mean, with my own animals, as far as behavior and vet stuff, I'm a fucking mess. And I'm like, how, how I'm not being good enough. Like I do that all the time. And I think of the hand thing or for ourselves when we don't recognize our own, it's so hard to recognize your own stress. And which is why I know we've Always, talked a lot yeah. about our partners and colleagues and friends supporting you, but there are a lot of simple little things that you can do to help support each other or recognize those things. 
Exactly. Well, and I love that because it's like sometimes it's just like or, if you know, we're on our phone and it's just we're so magnified and zoomed oh. in. And for those that are not watching, I'm, you know, doing it on my iPad <laughs> imaginarily. But it, that is it's we're so zoomed into things that we're not we don't know what's going on all over here because we're just looking it's at the funny. one thing. One thing I've recognized. So if I'm looking at social and I start being like, why am I not doing that? I'm like, OK, that's data. Bitch, you tired. Because you have to. I was like, you gonna, I have an app that like won't let me go on socials. Like it will shut it. It won't let me even if I go to it because I needed Ooh. that kind of management. It's called yeah. Opal. Oh, yeah. dude, I needed that kind of management. It's um, addicting. Yeah. But that is data to me because I'm always happy for my colleagues and I'm not comparing. Well, I don't compare myself because we all do. I tend not to compare myself as much. So when I see myself comparing myself to literally every fucking person, I'm like, okay, data, you tired, you exhausted. Let's get off of here. Like, or you're sick or you're, you know, not feeling well. Medically. Right. And that's something that I am alert to right away now versus because I'm like, why am I angry? Because again, kind of reflecting, like, I'm not usually angry about this. Like, what's happening? And then I'm like, social, you're feeling bummed and social media is making you darker because it does. How so, long have you been scrolling? Right. Yeah. How long have I been on here? No, that's that's so true, though, because it's just and it's like I did a post this morning of like, you know, how you start your day matters. And it's like the amount of times where I had I'd, I'd roll over in bed, look at my phone and I would just be like, OK, I'm going to check tests. And then like, oh, look at that Instagram opened. And then it's like, oh, I have all these comments and messages that I need to respond. OK, let me do this work five minutes after I woke up. OK, now I'm out of bed and I'm pissed off. Or you get a text that is which I'm working on boundaries with my lovely clients and friends <laughs> because I get that. You I wake that up to a text deeper, and it's like a deep one. It's like right. a deep one. And you're just like, dude. And I, not I'm, right now. I'm still not. It's in my brain. It's on my list to not look at my phone when I first wake up. I'm still not there. It's hard. I'm it's impulse. Working, but it's something I'm like, go downstairs, you know, go outside, drink your coffee, feed your cat, give meds, all that. Then look, it's only 15 minutes, but right. it is a process. I am I'm working on it. It's, oh, no, it's we're training ourselves and, and setting ourselves up. It, I mean, I, I was recovering from surgery, so it was like, well, am I going to do? I got a oh, week yeah. off work. Like, I'm stuck in bed all day. I'm on my phone all day. Like, let's just fuck it up. Let's yeah. light this fire. <laughs> let's see what happens. And stuff. But it's just I would be scrolling and then I'm like, oh, my whole mood just went right. Like, and you can it, feel it. And you like, feel it. Yeah. And you're just like, where'd that come from? Like, what the hell? And, and it's like icky. Like, like she's you do. Shaking. You guys can't see it, but I'm it, shaking it, off. Like, yeah, like it It actually, because I'm like, ew, why am I like spiteful? Like, what the fuck? Right. Right? Like, why am I feel? And then instead of leaning into it and not knowing, like we can reflect and I could be like, oh, this is because I slept like yeah. shit. Because I also have a watch that like monitors my runs, like all these fancy things. But also if I feel grumpy i'll look at the last seven nights i'm like oh shit girl you got two hours of rem sleep in the last five days maybe right. that's why that data has been i'm such a data nerd but it's i love it though it's, it's helpful been so helpful to or like i don't eat processed foods anymore barely at all i still eat sugar i'm not mental it, okay everyone but like i'm vegan and i used to eat a lot of garden and because i was like i don't have time to eat right. i don't have time to cook quick meals but now management and seat mm -hmm. arrangement i mm -hmm. ordered meals because me and my partner just suck at meal planning we've tried to each their own um, yeah whatever helps you that though. have the ingredients and i'm like okay have those chicken tenders vegan chicken tenders going to take 20 minutes is going to make take 20 minutes to make this meal that won't make you feel like shit so right. now we're just in that habit and we're learning new things about food and i'm actually learning kind of how to cook which is exciting um uh, you're so training yourself yeah. yeah and i drink more water without even having like there's water in my cup and not coffee you guys don't understand how amazing that is right but <laughs> i used to live off like five cups i still drink coffee i used to have like five cups of coffee in an energy drink and now i have one right. a week it's just like it's the little tiny changes where you're like oh i see where that affected and they this. add up it's like yes. the animals we work with i always tell people when i'm at a shelter or a vet clinic like i know we feel like we don't have control but you guys we actually have a hell of a lot of control of the environment to a, t a bunch of tiny little things for the animals and you make a really big difference and i'm really kind of like seeing those plants grow that i planted three years yeah. ago yeah well and just a lot of the times we get stuck in the cycle of just survival need to make money need to take care of the kids take care of the animals and then you get put on the back burner and you're just stuck in the cycle and you're like hating life but you don't know how to break out of it yeah. and yeah. my husband and I experienced that 
plenty over the years. And it's just it's like I'm usually the one to be like, whoa, okay, we're like we're on autopilot and this isn't helpful. And so he works a lot more than I do. So I'll take it on me and be like, all right, you need breakfast. And I know him. He will go grab a waffle and that'll be his food. And I'm like, bro, like you got to feed your brain. Like, And so I'll be like, all right, I'm going to make this and it'll take me, you know, 15, 20 minutes, but it'll give him enough energy and food. And, and you know, he, he gets his vegetables. Thank God. Sometimes you need a little help and that's yeah. okay. That's okay. And it's I've, I've talked about this plenty of whenever I have my Sunday. So my Mondays are my Sundays. And that's when I try to like prep things and, and kind of get ahead of the week and set myself up because I know that's the only day I'm going to do it. That's the only day I have time. And it's not like I spend the entire day. I spend maybe two hours. We have. So I'm sure many of us do this. But when I'm working with a caregiver who is pregnant, for example. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm like, OK, we're going to start this enrichment schedule now, a.m. and p.m. the way I do it. And then I was like, because when the baby comes out, guys, you're going to be over threshold. You're, you're gonna not going to have the time. You're gonna be yeah. Busy. That's appropriate behavior. <laughs> Considering. You know, considering your environment. Yeah. So I was like, I want to get you into some habits now. Like, hey, on Sunday, you're going to make four busy, but like it takes less than an hour. And then you're in this habit. So I took that. Again, this is where I take one. And I have started to do that. So for example, when I travel, I would drink a little more alcohol, guys. When I'm traveling for conferences. Stressful. And, yeah. Uh, I also, sometimes it's because of lack of vegan options, to be fair, where I'm at. So I was like, so I'm like, oh, I used to just push through it, but I would feel like shit. So now I started planning ahead and bringing like green vitamin powder things that I could put in water, bringing a water bottle. Ways to offset. Yeah. Like it or planning like how you do on your Mondays. Like, hey, what can I do with this time that I have to make the rest of my week easier? And once right. it's a habit, it's fairly easy. It's just and I mean, that habit is a bit of a bummer. But plenty of us prep enrichment for our animals. Why yeah. are we not prepping it for ourselves? Facts. And you can do them at the same time. Get an instant pot. It does not take that long to pour stuff in there, turn it on and go. Like I do it every week and it's just it's habit now. And it's like when I don't do that, my week is shit. And I, and I have like and direct. Yeah. yeah, like I, I don't have time. I, I used to say that that's not even in my vocabulary now because I'm getting personally, I needed to get rid of I love that. that. I used it so much. It's an easy excuse to reach for. Push myself into fucking like I it, it's obs- it's autopilot. You're shoving it's yourself into autopilot. Yeah. How far I've gotten considering how much I allowed that to happen to me. Like the fact that I survival mode been hospitalized or which there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm surprised because right. I'm like Same. I'm pushing myself. It's this disgu- now that I think about it, I'm like, I would like don't shake your friends. But I would be like, friend, what are you doing? Tav? Like, what are you doing? So it's just but again, reflection. And you, when you're in it, it's hard to know and all that lovely. Well, and, and I think that's the good point of just, you know, it's like we if we saw a friend going through this, we would snap them out of it. In a gentle way, or, or yeah. not gentle In way, gentle depending way. on your friendship. Don't shake, don't shake <laughs> them. I'm shaking myself, so it's less aversive. Okay. But it, it's true. And, and, you know, if you don't have a partner, then it's even harder, I'm sure, because it's like, who's going to be that person to notice when you have these shifts? And it, I'm so grateful I have the partner I have. And we've worked so hard at the communication that we have now so that he can say, hey, you're struggling. Hey, you take your medication? No. Oh, okay. He well, asked why? Me all the time. Yeah. Oh, he noticed this. Yeah. Oh, no. I have like the timer caps like yeah, on yeah, my. Yeah. Time. I just showed everyone mine. Yeah. It's so easy to forget. That's so funny. But also, I think, like you said, not everyone. I'm so thankful. Like I say all the time on my own podcast, like my partner doesn't get the recognition that I get. Same. Like, yeah. And how I would be anything. I mean, I'm still comfortable with myself because we actually have a healthy relationship and you should be if you're in that kind of relationship. Right. But. I I know that support the the support when I was testing for my boards he would lay my clothes out like it was oh. no I'm so but for people who maybe do, doesn't have that partner I think also having colleagues that support you and friends right. that are in the field so if you don't have that we love you and, and you don't need that necessarily yeah, like that's just a bonus yeah reach out but also like reach out to a few colleagues even if they're in other states because in your city yes. for some reason it doesn't look the same way that for some reason uh, right. Interestingly enough, there's no, uh, there's probably data on it, but I don't know. Like, just join a group that's say, that's well moderated, or join your local like KPA, CTP, whatever group, and having because that's been something that's been really helpful. Like having 
friends, well, colleagues that have ch- turned into friends to talk to, like, I have to fire a client. I'm really conflicted and unsure about it because I'm a people pleaser, but I should have fired them like three months ago. Cause this but you need that sounding me. board. Yeah. I've reached out to a bunch of, like, I went, reached out to three of my trainer friends and it's so funny because all three of them said the same thing. They're like, you need to be more abrupt and cold in this email. And I was like, fair enough. And the fact that they all gave me the exact same data, I was like, they are. So now I have fair templates, point. Yeah. Like, templates, same. Yes. So I could just change them up a little bit. You know what I mean? Or if I see a super intense, like, comment to my post, or that again, I pick, I, because you could tell, I'm like, this person's just angry. This isn't about me. They're I'm not being, being genuine. Yeah. Because, like, guys, real talk. So I literally have templates that I could just, I, don't respond right away because obviously we shouldn't. You're you're hot, like hot. And then I have my templates, and then I share because we all have those friends that you just text. Like I have a friend that texts me when something stressful happens, and I love her so much. And then she will read it, and we'll be like, because also even when when we're responding to someone who's sometimes they are genuinely curious or mis- right, right. But sometimes they're really angry. I still want to approach it. I'm very aware of what I put out in the world. It's like kind of like you were mentioning earlier, even with my posts, I am so extra sensitive to what words I use because I've right. seen the way that words have not even from like a labeling human standpoint, from like no. a describing just like a infographic about right. whatever. They can because, lean too much in one word or whatever. And how many, how people misinterpret this thing that I understand how other people would post that. And you're like, there's no way any, how did you take that from that? But thankfully, <laughs> when you post things for a long time and you've been in the field for longer, you can learn and be like, I'm going to, like, I started narrating some of my handling videos because I'm like, this is Sometimes just, it helps to have yeah. the tone. Yeah. Yeah. Contact, more context, more tone. How can I make more people understand this? And provide more nuance. Yes, exactly. And don't get me wrong it's frustrating sometimes because that's a lot more work and I do work for myself and I would love to have a bunch of employees I have a virtual assistant who's amazing but that's about it um <laughs> well I need to get more I'm aware because I do need to baby steps stuff. though it's baby steps but that's also really scary like I right really, that's very overwhelming and scary to me with how many other gigs I have it's just but it's good to like I saw the question that you because she has these awesome questions she sent me time because she's so prepared Oh, thank you. And she was talking about, there's a question about delegating. And I was like, mental note, like data, I need to be better about that. After oh, I'm terrible oh, about it. No, I'm horrible about it. Like I I have like an iron grip and I don't want to let anyone help me. Like I think it's so hard to get out of that. Like I can do it. I can do it. I got it. I got this. Except when you work for your own business, because it's one right. thing to work with like in a place that's a right. little, it still can be challenging, but it's a little easier. But then like. It's I'm, hard to give your plate to someone yeah. and be like, you're not going to drop it. You're not going to fuck it up the way. I trust so many amazing people, but also I've worked really fucking hard to build what I have and to be the genuine person I am out there with information. And you don't want it to shift. Yeah. So I, but also like my virtual assistant is amazing and I love her so much. And she handles all my every, every, what is it called? When someone reaches out on your website. Intake. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Inquiry. So inquiry, beautiful word. She. (laughs) So she and some of it is just we have a template with my costs and all that stuff and my wait list. And it's fairly simple for her. But how life changed? I'm like, how did I not do this my first three years of owning my business? Like it's I was like, it's too much money. I'm poor. But then I was like, actually, it pays for itself. And, and then you're able not, to do what you're good at. Guys, I didn't get TSA until recently because I thought it was for rich people because I grew up in East Cleveland and I didn't go on my first plane until I was like 24. So I created this narrative that TSA was a rich people thing for celebrities. Right. I know this sounds silly. This is the narrative I created. I so have that I- same narrative in my head. You know, like seventy five dollars for four years, and I I travel. I didn't a lot. know that. Dude, oh my god! It is. I still, guys. I've had five trips with TSA, and every time I text my husband, I'm like, I cannot believe this. Like, I'm still right. in in awe of like how much easier I'm going to the airport thirty minutes before, and with how much I'm traveling, it has been life changing. And I'm like, damn your narratives, Tabitha, get out of your narratives. Well, and just it's. You know, we can piggyback on that with operating your business and not feeling like you deserve the help or yeah. or you deserve to hire people. You're not established enough. Therefore, oh yeah. But there are so many ways where we can set ourselves up from the beginning if we're just getting started or if we're rebranding whatever and realizing like, oh, okay, no, I this is good because then I'm going to be able to focus on what I'm good at. You can't wear all the hats, and I say this as I wear five hats, but. You can't wear all the hats and expect to get anywhere. You know how hard it has been for me to like 
even just have, you know, Josh and I share an admin and just asking her to like send an email. I'm like, I can do this. But Josh is like, but you don't have to. I'm like, oh, I don't have to. You're right. Okay, here, can you do this? It'll feel a little bit better every, because you also ask about like, what's your one piece of advice that you would five years ago? And mine is you can't fucking do everything and you can't make everyone happy. Oh my God, you can't make everyone happy. And I could go on that. To be fair, I made quite a few people happy. Wait, (laughs) I'm actually, like I was joking, uh, like I was talking to, because I recently spoke at the IABBC conference and I was like joking with colleagues, friends. And I was like, to be fair, I get, I don't get a lot of like negative stuff considering but to be fair that might just be the way I take in negative stuff is different than maybe five years ago but also I'm kind of at this point in my career where I'm like reflecting and I really because I have been doing everything for quite a while and it's not right. sustainable so I have to really like I'm literally in the process right now of like sitting back writing things down figuring out like Tabitha you can't work for all these organizations plus do this plus do this plus do this you have been and that's amazing but not sustainable no so that can also be really because I'm in that process and it's kind of scary because, you know, right. you can't and, do it well. And you want to have all the connections and all the relationships yeah. and, and, and help all these people. I this is my first year that I was I've been turning down conferences and I'm like, what, what? I'm doing. Thank you. That's amazing. patting myself Say on the back. No. Help right. Yeah. Because it's just I'm finally at a point now where it's like I don't necessarily need that exposure, which is I will toot my own damn horn because I deserve it. I've worked hard. But I'm sure about saying that. What? Yeah. I'm sure of saying about saying like when we say, for example, like you you just did it because I do it, too. Uh, like we were doing it for the lack or the the podcast Recording. where you're like i'm tooting my own horn and and you kind of like had to like jump i know i it. i know like i don't way. deserve it <laughs> i'm the same way like it's so funny because like i'm fairly well known for some things and it's and i'm still like but that's where my part my partner again that guy even four years ago people would say things like tabitha you're lucky and right away my husband would come up and be like she's not fucking lucky she works her fucking ass off and blah 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 and now he's always in the back of my head and it's and again having standing up for your friends like that and like even when we toot our own hordes it still makes us uncomfortable which it does a lot i felt uncomfortable saying of, that. yeah you shrugged your body like i did okay i did no the fact that you noticed that is huge we need to make again it kind of validates me because i do it too but also i'm like that's an interesting observation like why can't we be fucking proud of what we do and not second guessing in our heads but it's a process it's a learning thing but that was just interesting because I was like, we all, I see no. like mentors who are like, and I'm like, you're a goddess? Like, what are you talking about? I know. Well, just like when we first came on and I was like, I'm so excited to talk to you. Like, I'm a big fan. And you're just like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Thank you. People like you know who you are and you're like, this is sick. I love you too. But also like. I... The doubt comes in and you're like, yeah. why do you like me? This is weird. Even like... after like a long learning, it's just interesting. And that's probably part of the human condition, but also part of the people that choose to be in these fields as well. Right. There's probably that that caregiving mentality can probably tend to come with some more of that self-doubt and that stuff. But also we should be proud of ourselves and not be ashamed of it and to your own horn all the time. It's because, you know, so many times it's just we don't give ourselves that celebration and we don't we we just aren't like, yeah, you know what? I did a lot. I've been working hard these last four years and I can actually say this like and that's what I was saying, like with these conferences approaching me and, and wanting Woof Culture to sponsor. I, you know, I feel like people think that I just bring in all the money, but I don't. Um, and so it's they're a like, lot of work. Conferences aren't it. cheap. Oh, and so they like are asking me, I'm just like, sorry, it's out of my budget. And I feel guilty at the time saying no. But then I'm like, I'm at a place where I can say no confidently and not be regretful of saying no. And it's just like, okay, I deserve to sit back and actually soak in that because, you know, four years ago, I wasn't in that place. Four years ago, I didn't think I would be at a conference. I didn't think conferences would be approaching me. I was nobody. And so it's just like, whoa, like take a second and appreciate that. And I'm not saying that, you know, you got to be speaking at a conference to have that feeling. It, It can just be as little as like, hey, my books are full and I'm not taking clients for two months. That is huge. Oh, when I started my waiting list, I... That's a big accomplishment. Shit. I went through some shit, but I was also like, I mostly only people are waiting to see you. Yeah. I only see severe behavior cases. So with that context, like these aren't, these are generally like aggression. Like they're very severe. And I was like, I can't, I'm not doing my job appropriately if I'm taking all of you on. Right. Like realistically. And then I was like, I can't have a waiting list because then animals are going to die. I'm just being honest, guys. Uh, I I had to go through this. And and oh yeah, you go on that. Yeah. People are like, I'm going to euthanize my 
my pet if you don't. And that's something that has been, and again, I am thankful for those experiences. And to put that on someone though, because I, that's one thing that I will not. So now at this point, based on my vet med and behavior career, that's one thing straight the fuck up. I do not tolerate, like you do not manipulate Absolutely. Me. Like, no. fuck you. Sorry. Like that's, a, I don't say that, but like, I'm also like, no, because I've literally spent fucking five days writing a behavior plan for you for free and you didn't listen to anything I said or I provided you with alternatives like various alternative solutions and and then it was really eye-opening over the years I realized like oh you don't want help like no you just want you know and also I I have referrals and immediately my a virtual assistant sends out, hey, like I have separation anxiety referral people and other. Right. Like, so it's not even because, guys, there's more than enough behavior for to go around. <laughs> I'm not just leaving them hanging. Like, and honestly, eight to 10 weeks is really, I mean, considering I'm pretty proud of that, considering I work for myself, that's not that long of a waiting list. Real, real talk. But again, this is where I'm like justifying still in my head. Like, right. blah, 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 blah. it's so challenging. But I, it was super relieving and I'm like doing my job so much more effectively now. I have that appropriate waiting list. But again, I provide appropriate evidence-based trainers. And also I have tons of free, I write resources and alternatives. Like, it's not like you're leaving them hanging. You're like, hey, can you wait a little bit? But here's this. Yes. Like, and that's also makes me feel better. I have like 500 articles on my website. I have a bunch of free resources. Oh, I was looking. Yeah. I have a freaking podcast. So I'm like, girl so I kind of have to like talk myself down and I'm like you're doing your part you're doing more than you can like you've provided more than enough but also I think we all probably go through that where it's just like of course that's how we learn I can't help everybody with every and to be fair I may not be a good fit for everybody as well or that person may not want help they may just be panicking in that moment at that day because my virtual assistant brought this up and I was like that's a really good observation like she's like they're just like over threshold in this moment and she works with a few trainers so she's gotten pretty savvy she knows the lingo and she's like you, she, that person's just like fucking super pissed about this in this moment so they wrote this long ranty non kind of cohesive email to you emotional reactive right yeah. which is again we're all humans and they got it's that fair out. yeah i get that and she's like so i'm gonna schedule send them scheduling information but they most likely just needed to vent and vent. i was like Beautiful. Hell yeah. yeah. Like, but that's not a good observation from her part because I don't think I would have ever. Obviously, we know that by the time people reach us, they probably talk to so many people and unfortunately they're at a certain point. Them. Yeah, they're right. frustrated, which, which is why we are empathetic and understanding that like you don't want to actually euthanize your pet. You're just no one has listened to you and you're in a really bad place versus my first year as a behavior consultant. That was really hard to hear with more than 75% of my voicemails, you know? Right. But and, I'm and in a place could not now. internalize that. Right. I know now that, especially with cats, but dogs too, there's very few resources, like evidence-based, you know, right. animal welfare positive behavior consultants and trainers. Finding that information is really challenging. Again, as a vet tech, it was hard for me. So I'm like, whoa, general public. Like, this must be almost impossible for you. And, you know, we tend not to be as loud, which I always joke. I was I talked to Michael Shikasio at the conference and I was like, we need to be fucking louder. I'm pretty good about being loud. I'm just bubbly as hell, too. And I was like, <laughs> being loud, bubbly and kind. I'm going to get the message across. Like, you know, so, so I always joke like we just need to be louder. But in a, when you hear louder, that doesn't necessarily mean like abrupt and aversive <laughs> louder. Right. It's it's it's, uh, you know, welcoming and, yeah, and louder. Soft. Because yeah, it, it's it works. I mean, it, I mean, the amount of people that have reached out to me since starting this podcast and they're like, oh, my God, I took my email off of my phone. I turned my social media notifications on. I bought a whiteboard and I'm just like, yes, yes. you know. We like those are so many other. big things. Oh yes, gosh, that's huge. It's so big. And it's just like, wow, if, you know, maybe if they wouldn't have heard this podcast, they wouldn't have done that. And they would have kept in that cycle. And it's like, even if it's three people, I'm happy. It's huge. And and there is a ripple effect happening. And I think the more we talk about it, the more that we share our own diagnosis, share our own struggles and, and know that there are ways that people have set themselves up and they may not be the same, but there are solutions and it's just finding which one works. And that is how we approach behavior and training. No training is the same. No training protocol is going to be the same. It's always going to be different for the individual. So why can't we apply it to ourselves? Beautiful. <laughs> it's true. Oh, and it's just it's funny because we don't see that until it's like someone really cracks open the walnut and they're like, oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, I also, so on my path, 
Like I had a close friend who left that med a year before that due to severe mental stuff. And I will never forget what she said to me because it was really eye opening and I share it with a lot of my friends and colleagues. But I said, she said, girl, you aren't like on the ledge of compassion fatigue and burnout. She's like, you're swimming in that shit. And I was <laughs> just like, that was a really good, again, everyone has different ways to define things. But for me, but we need those analogies. That really like hit home like where again I had burnout and compassion fatigue along with lots of other undiagnosed stuff, yeah undiagnosed stuff like because also I think sometimes burnout and compassion fatigue are kind of words that are thrown out like this is why mental health is and I'm like usually it's mental health issues on top of like burnout right. and compassion fatigue it's not that burnout and compassion fatigue aren't bad on their own right but usually but they go hand in hand it. usually yeah there's a lot just like most dogs with thunderstorm anxiety have noise phobia like you know like these things go hand in hand and we can use that information to better our animals that we work with, but also ourselves like, hey, sometimes it just takes seeing someone else like sharing their story and just being like, ah, oh. like sometimes we just need help with the light bulb. Yeah. A year before that, where she had a she was in a really, really bad place. And because like you mentioned, identifying as because I am a veterinary technician and I am a behavior consultant and I am a VTS and I'm proud of those things. But it can be really dangerous to only identify as one thing because right. like leaving general practice, I'm still a vet tech, but that was so long, yeah. hard for me or whatever you define as behavior consultant. You might be only like separation anxiety is your fucking jam. And that's all you want to do. And you're like, am I still, am I still like a trainer? Tra like we all do. Right. Uh, you are like, you know what I mean? I'm also a hair color aficionado. I'm also a runner. I'm also a daughter. Like, so I think. I don't get me wrong. I still identify as those things 100%. You don't need to be in one box, though. Yes. I used You're to limiting yourself. Identify myself as one of those things. And that can be really dangerous. Like, you know how hard it took me to accept that I was an entrepreneur? And a podcaster and a badass. <laughs> Thank you. But it's true. It's like for the longest time, I was just like, like, I didn't know how to describe woof culture to people. And so oh. people would ask like, oh, what do you do? And people that weren't in the training industry don't dissect that. But but it's inter it is interesting because people would ask what I do and I'm like oh I like have a t-shirt business like oh. like and my sister in law would be like hold up like you don't know who she is See, and I'm like oh help. And, and the more they do that then you start saying like again you are an entrepreneur 100 percent yeah it just took me four years to realize that I'm like am I though but then you know people will come up and be like oh do you you know still do training and it's like with my own animals my husband sure are you still a trainer yes. I have that knowledge. I still apply it yeah. in different ways. But it's the same thing of like, you know, do I still do hair? Well, I cut my husband's hair. Oh, is that what you did before? Yeah, I did oh, hair well, for like fun. six to eight years before. Oh, up. see. And again, like those skills don't go away necessarily. Like I was like, no, I'm not drawing blood every day anymore. I'm going to suck at it. And my partner's like, Tabitha, that's not how skills work. Like he just, but again, you create all these like, or I'm not seeing as many of this specific type of case. Like, because I see tons but of there's... aggression and I'm kind of over it. Like, but you're like putting yourself in these boxes. But how do we even define a behavior consultant or a trainer? Right. Or a it looks different for everybody. Yeah. Well, and there's this is, you know, we're going off on tangent, but that's right. fine. But we have we develop different skills from whatever, you know, past lives, past jobs we've had. And so it's like for the longest time, I'm like, I was a stupid, su superficial hairstylist. Like, all, like I didn't do anything besides screw up my feet and my shoulders. And then I'm like, Oh, that's actually something I learned in my career because I didn't know how to get people to talk. I was so quiet. I never talked. And then I got into hair and I'm like, I have to talk. They're in my chair. I got to get people to this talk. Gonna like, get weird if we this is going to get weird. Weird. Yeah. Right. And we both sit here mute and uncomfortable. And so I had to develop that skill. And when I had that skill, that helped with training. I knew how to get people to talk. I knew how to get people to open up and make them feel comfortable. And I'm like, oh, this is a skill. Like I didn't, you know, a lot of people don't have this. My husband and I are very opposite in that. He is very analytical and to the point, whereas like I open up, like let's have a conversation. Yeah, and so part. that's how we work together so well. And people would see us in consults together because we do them together and they'd be like, are you guys married? Because they couldn't tell because we would be so professional and so different from each other. So it's just, it's interesting how that I can have that ripple effect. I know I went on a tangent. Ooh, <laughs> later on, not during this podcast, but I want to hear about you doing consults with your partner because that sounds like a whole nother story I have to hear Oh, about. he and I need to do a whole episode together. It's just me convincing no, his butt legit. to get on. <laughs> I want to hear... 
peer pressure, but also in the most positive way because I respect your point. <laughs> I would love to hear that because I, I feel like that could be an interesting dichotomy where I'm not familiar with a lot of people that do consults with their partner or even another behavior consultant necessarily. And I feel like that could be so helpful, but also since you're married, it could also be different. Okay, okay. well... I feel like we have had such a good conversation, Tabitha. Oh, my God. Like, we've talked about so many things. And just I feel like people are going to feel so reassured in knowing like, OK, this doesn't have to be my set path. I can change it and I can find little tiny ways to adjust it if I can. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on and for starting this beautiful podcast and for Wolf Culture and for everything. I love your, thank you. your partner. Well, I guess it's both of your businesses because it's not his business, but because you, you do the website. We have a lot. Too. Yeah, yeah. And like, but I love everything you guys do. And thank you for letting me like share a little bit about my experiences and everyone out there. You're fucking amazing. Just your <laughs> trend daily reminder. Uh, you're fucking amazing. And you are better than you actually think you are. Just heads up. Oh, my God. Yes. And if you found this podcast helpful, you like what we're doing here at The Leash Mind, leave a comment, subscribe, like, tag us on social media. Just give us a little R+. And we'll be back with another episode.